Shabbat Shalom. We are going to, oh, I didn't put that down nicely. You have to be respectful to your mask. It's saved our lives thus far. We should really treat it with respect. Um, so we are going to get started with Shalom Aleichem on page 142. excited to see all of you here today and welcome to everyone who is joining us via zoom it's a beautiful shabbat evening it was a little toasty earlier and the breeze is already coming what a blessing that we have um, for those of you who aren't familiar this week um, in jewish tradition we observed what's called Tisha B'Av, the ninth of the month of Av, which is a day of mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, um, although a day of mourning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G, sounds also terrible. Um, but the day of mourning is an opportunity for us to um, kind of pull away from the everything's fine, everything's going great, there are no problems um, that we often use to operate in the world. But this Shabbat, the Shabbat after, Tisha B'Av, is called Shabbat Nachamu, meaning Shabbat 
of comfort. And uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that later in the service. But I want us to encourage ourselves to think about what is the comfort that we need in our own lives? What are the sources of pain that we've experienced? And what are the ways that we need comfort in general and from this Shabbat? So we are going to welcome the Shabbat, the Shabbat of comfort on page four with the lighting of, or sorry, page 121, slide four, um, for the lighting of the Shabbat candles. And it's my pleasure to invite Jen Van Stel and Karen Bressler to light the Shabbat candles. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, may we by our lives give light to all who behold us, as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light. So may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu V'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Le'ad Likner Le'ad Likner Shal Just as this week we have gone from Tisha B'Av, a time of mourning, to Shabbat Nachamu, a time of comfort, we also celebrate going from darkness to light and light to darkness. And even in the darkness, there is light. On page 132, we'll sing the words of Psalm 97, or Zeruah.
We continue welcoming Shabbat with the words of Lecha Dodi on page 138. Forty-six with the words of Barhu, um, and please remain standing. Page 
148 as we sing about the way that light turns to darkness, turns to light as we go from day to night. page 152 for the words of Shema. Tam 
Almazuzot betecha uvi sharecha lema antis cheru vaasi temet kol mitzvotai vi tem kadoshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem asher hotzeit yetchem me eretz mitzrayim. Lihiot lachem lelohim, ani Adonai lohechem, Adonai lohechem emet. It's my pleasure to invite Jonathan King. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. That there is a better place, a promised land. That the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. That there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. We sing the words of Micha Mocha on page 158. Mm. Now I don't need to have you guys singing up in the heavens today. There we go. <laughs> Continue with Hashki Venu, which asks God to allow us to fall asleep and be able to actually get to sleep and then wake up tomorrow refreshed and renewed and excited. Um, I want us to take a moment to take a deep breath in and a breath out. Make sure that you're not like giving your neighbor anxiety about how much breath you're. <laughs> pointing in their direction, but just a breath in and a breath out. And for a moment, just try to embody the rest that you're hoping to get this Shabbat.
Tefillah, the central part of our service. Um, but before we do that, um, as I've previously mentioned, um, tefillah is the core part of our service. It's where we say the things that we need to make sure that we get said before services are over. Um, so as we've started doing um, the past few weeks, we're going to take just a moment to think about what are the prayers that you need to say before we leave services this evening. So we'll take a moment and just think about what is the prayer that you need to say. And when you're ready, we will continue with Adonai Sfatai on page 164. Please rise in either body or spirit. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe avotinu v'imoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Ha El Hagado, Hagibur Vahanora, El El Yon, Gomer Hasadim Tovim, Bekone Hakol, Bezocher Haste Avot, Vimahot. Who may be Geula leave Nevenehem, Lema and Shemo Beahava, Mela Hosero Moshia Umagain, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham, Vesrat Sarah, Ata Gibur Leola Madonai, Mechaye Hakola Tara Vehoshia, Maurit Hata. Mechalkel Chaim Bechesed Mechaye Hakol 
ברחמים רבים. סומך נופלים ורופך עולים, ומתיר אסורים, ומקיים אמונתו, לשני עפר, מחמוך הבעל גבורות, ומדום הלך, מלך ממית ומחיה, ומצמיח ישוע, ונאמן נטל החיות הכל. ברוך אתה אדוני, מחיי הכל. אתה קדוש ושמך קדוש, וקדושים בכל יום יהללו חסלה. ברוך אתה אדוני, האל הקדוש. Please be seated. And we pray for peace on page 178. Shalom Ra. silent prayer.
that the birds keep on wanting to sing along with us on Friday nights. They're Jewish birds. They actually, they came specifically for Shabbat. So something that you might not know about deciding what verses we read in a Torah portion. Traditionally, one is not supposed to end on a depressing note. The idea is that one should never finish the Torah reading experiencing, then 500 people were swallowed up into a hole and died, <laughs> for example. Rather, when dividing up Torah, we are meant to end on what's called nechemta, meaning comfort or consolation. This past Sunday, um, as I previously mentioned, marked the day of mourning in the Jewish calendar, Tisha B'Av, the ninth of the month of Av. During this period, traditionally, Jews around the world recall the destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem. In fact, we don't just recall the destruction, we are instructed to mourn on Tisha B'Av. In addition to reading from the Book of Lamentations, which tells the tale of Jerusalem's destruction, this morning for many Jews around the world looks like fasting, choosing not to greet people, and even crying. However, others um, find the idea that some random building that we never saw thousands of years ago that was destroyed not immediately evoking a deep sense of mourning and pain. And I'll admit that I actually used to be one of those people. In my mind, I thought, why force ourselves to mourn if we aren't already feeling it? In fact, one of my first year, or in my first year of rabbinical school, I wrote an article in my own personal blog that I entitled Tisha B'Av, Stop pretending you're sad about the temple. And describe Tisha B'Av observances I encountered as changing every action to void it of anything besides a forced melancholia that compares to nothing I've experienced during moments of true loss in my life. So let's just say that I did not win the minds and hearts of all of my classmates with that one. Since that time, through ongoing learning and discussions I've had with some incredible colleagues, I've had a change of heart, kind of. If we're being honest, I still find some of these observances a bit unnatural in their presentation of mourning. That being said, I've, as I've reflected upon experiences of Tisha B'Av and the practices for the days and weeks surrounding them from a human, emotional, and psychological lens, I realized that the morning doesn't have to feel forced. And from personal experience, I can say that allowing ourselves to mourn during this time is a practice that we can benefit from. A few years ago, as I changed my personal practice around Tisha B'Av, I started to frame my mindset by remembering the utter destruction I've encountered in my own life. I remembered that water was poisoned in my home city and that many will live with the health consequences of this for their entire lives. I remembered that in Detroit, which I like to call my family's Jerusalem, a city that is close to my heart, I remembered that there continues to be a mass of blight and abandoned buildings in certain neighborhoods with little access to fresh food and resources while in the good and up and coming neighborhoods, large corporations and wealthy gentrifiers are pushing out lower income Detroiters. I remembered that refugees around the world were experiencing destruction that we read about in Lamentations in real time with no place to go. Perhaps if you were to add to this list, you would also remember the destruction that the wildfires have caused to homes and livelihoods or even beloved summer camps. Or you would, might think about the human beings that you pass on the streets who do not have homes or the resources that come with them. Whether or not we like to admit it, we encounter destruction, pain, and loss all of the time. 
but in order to function in the world, we may turn down our awareness of it from moment to moment. Our lives resemble a webcomic called Gun Show by Casey Green, which was published in 2013, which some of us may know as the This Is Fine meme. In this meme, there's a dog that sits in, the in a house that's caught on fire, and instead of going anywhere, he just sits there and says, this is fine, when things are in fact not fine. This is a survival technique. But if we completely tune these things out, we risk the side effects of ignoring them or even contributing to them. Ignoring pain and trauma in the world damages ourselves, our loved ones, and the world around us. During the rest of the year, we think about solutions to these issues. But on Tisha B'Av, we don't think about fixing. We, think, we feel the losses. And for many of us, the feelings are the hard part. I can say that from my own personal experience. Pain and mourning are uncomfortable. And we all want to, all we want to do is to make it better and to just go away, whatever it takes. So we don't allow ourselves to confront pain or sit with what it means to be human on an emotional level. We shut down the mourning because what happens if we start reflecting on our trauma or our loss and the pain never stops? What if it's more than we can handle? And what happens when we realize that these things deserve more mourning than we could ever truly give? And we begin to feel like it would be a sacrilege to start feeling and then in a brief amount of time leave that feeling? What happens when we're forced to confront the fact that even if we dedicate our lives to addressing these issues, we may never truly see them made right? There are no good answers to these questions. But the reality is that mourning is an important process or is important in the process of healing. It reminds us of our humanity and the humanity of others in the world. We need to mourn, but we also need to have sources of comfort as we move through our stages of mourning. And that is where this week comes into play. This Shabbat, the Shabbat after Tisha B'Av, which is called Shabbat Nachamu, is named after the Haftarah for this week from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1, where we read, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Yomar, Elohechem. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. From this Shabbat through the Shabbat, right before Rosh Hashanah, our Haftarah portions, there are seven in total, are words of comfort as we move through the depths of Tisha B'Av to hope for a new year. This is the lesson that hooked me to this practice. We do not need to self-flagellate in order to fulfill the Jewish requirement of mourning on Tisha B'Av. Rather, through building time in our calendar, we are required to confront our traumas and the depths of our sadness that we don't usually allow ourselves to feel. And then we build in recovery time to allow ourselves to receive comfort from our texts from our loved ones, and from our community. The comfort we receive doesn't take away from the fact that these things are still horrible. And in fact, true mourning doesn't work that way. It doesn't take away from the pain. It just allows us to sit with it. And then we can move on, never fully. It's, it opens us up, allowing us, even for a short time, to understand in a different way just how horrible it is. Perhaps in doing this, we realize that we have more mourning to do. Or in some cases, we realize that we have more work to do so that we can prevent different pains coming with us and, uh, from coming with us in the future as much as possible. 
this year has been filled with pain that we have dialed down to survive an incredibly difficult pandemic. We may still be trying to understand the losses that we have experienced and the ways that our minds, bodies, and souls and whole beings have coped with the trauma. While we haven't completely arrived to the other side of the pandemic, I want to encourage us to not wait until next year to confront our losses. We all want to move away from the depression and discomfort that this time has caused, and we want to prevent it from taking any more of our time than it has already taken. But in order for us to heal, we have to dedicate time to feel. It is through this process that we will be able to find the sources of comfort that we need. Just like the readings we select within the Torah, we have to find a way to end on Nechemta. Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Yomar Elohechem. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. In honor of Shabbat Nachamu, I wanted to share a melody that I find really beautiful that was written for Shabbat Nachamu and written for um, the purpose of comforting. As we continue thinking about healing and comfort, we turn our thoughts to the Misha Beirach, where we think of those who are in need of healing and comfort, of body, of soul, of spirit. If there is anybody who you are thinking of, um, we will um, get the names here in just a moment. If you are on Zoom, please feel free to share their names in the chat. Um, and um, for those who are in person with me, please feel free to share the names of those you are thinking about as my hand passes over you. For all those names that we've said aloud, that we've kept in our hearts, and that we've typed in the chat, we turn to page 371 for the words of Misha Beirach.
you continue with the words of Alenu, which can be found on page 586. Please rise in either body or spirit. Alenu le shabeach la don ha kol la teit gedula liot ser brishit Shalo asanu kigo ye ha aratzot Velo samanu kemish bechot ha adama Shalo sam chalkenu kahem Vegar alenu kecho hamonam Va'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim Lifnei melech malchei ha'malchim ha'kadosh baruchu V'nemar v'haya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz v'yom ha'hu Bayom ha'hu iye Adonai echad u'shemo 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 echad. Please be seated. There are stars up above. So far away, we only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest nights, these are the stars that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. This evening, we remember congregants and family members who have been called to their eternal rest in recent days. We remember Carol Bitter, mother of Arlen Peavy. And on this Shabbat, we remember those whose yard site occurred this past week. Please rise as your loved one's name is called. Isaac Berenbaum, father of Babe King. Israel Irving Berenbaum, brother of Babe King. Francis Cohen, mother of Mrs. Arlene Hitchcock. Sam King, remembered by Babe King. Joshua Malin Weisenfeld, son of Nancy Weisenfeld. And Gena Yasvoin, remembered by Zoya Kravitz. We also remember the 610,000 lives lost across our country to COVID since the beginning of our pandemic. And we remember the 98 lives lost in Surfside, Florida during to the, uh, the condo collapse. For all those names that we've said and for those that we keep in our hearts, we say, Zichronam Libracha, may their memories be a blessing. We now rise as a community on page 598 for the words of Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Gadal Vid Kadash Shemei Rabba, Be'alma Divra Chirute V'amlich Malchute, Be'chayechon Uv'yomechon, Uv'chayet Zechol Beit Yisrael, Ba'agala uvizman kariv ve'imru amen. Yehe shme rabam vorach le olam ulame almaya. Yit barach vishtabach, vit ba'ar vit raman vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal, shme de kudja brihu. Ve'e la min kol birchata vashirata. Tushbachata venechemata. Dami ran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya. V'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'imramav. Hu ya'ase shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael 
Please be seated. to invite up our very own president of the congregation, Rick <laughs> Rudzinski. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Following tonight's service, the social hall will be open so you can browse the remaining books from Rabbi Shulman's collection. You're welcome to take any that interest you. There are Judaic and non-Judaic books. You need to be masked to enter. Please use hand sanitizer before going in and limit to only 10 people in the room at a time. Tomorrow, July 24th, we will be honoring Jill Simon for all her years of service to TBT with Havdalah, wine, and chocolate. Yay on the chocolate. Reservations were required to attend. We look forward to seeing those of you who pre-registered. Masks are mandatory and TBT COVID guidelines will be enforced. Join us next week on Friday, July 30th for our multi-access Shabbat service at 6.30 p.m., hour earlier. This will also be a Shapiknik. Bring your own kosher style dinner for after the service and please refrain from sharing. Reservations are required to attend in person. You can RSVP by clicking the link in the weekly emails or on the website or by calling the office. Masks are mandatory and TBT guidelines will be enforced. No RSVP is necessary to attend on Zoom. TBT is once again partnering with Jewish Family Services of Silicon Valley to collect backpacks and school supplies for preschoolers through adult learners. The equipped to Learn Backpack Drive is 100% online. The deadline to donate has been extended to August 1st. With your help, these students will be off to a great start to a successful 2021-2022 school year. Check the website or weekly email for additional information. There's still time to participate in WTBT's Count Your Blessings fundraiser. Donations are being accepted through the end of July. You can find details in the weekly email and on our website. Thanks to Ann Anderson and Janice Fontino for representing the worship committee and to Jim Cohen and Gigi Dornfest for helping with the Zoom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Is there thanks to Rick for constantly making this happen. There's so much setup that he does every week and I haven't acknowledged it up until now, but I would not know what to do without him. Um, so, with that, we are going to close with Vishamru, um, which we've been doing recently anyways, um, but I thought was especially fitting because I think that Shabbat is often a sense of comfort and also singing fun, upbeat, upbeat songs that we've known for a while is also... A sense of comfort as well so if you want to turn to page 162 um, there are the words there um, oh we are before doing Vishamru I got ahead of myself I love Vishamru um, we will do the family blessing um, which um, if you are here with a family member or an honorary family member reach out to them
and we say, Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha, Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yichunecha, Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. Amen. Wow, I really skipped like five different things. Bishamri will do that to you. <laughs> okay, on page 123, we have the words of Kiddush. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Malach HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Malach HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav Be'ratzavanu V'shabat Kodcho Be'ahava U'v'ratzon Hinchilanu Sikaran lima a severeshit, ki hu yom techila, le mikra e kodash, ze echer le tziat, mi israim, ki vanu vacharta, veotanu ki dashta, mi Shabbat Kachacha Be'ahava Uvratzon Hinchaltanu Baruch Ata Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat you and the presentation <laughs> that's what I'm saying abracadabra and the chala appeared Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lachamin Haaretz Now we get to Vishamru. Page 162, let us bring it on like we brought on the Shabbat.
Shabbat Shalom, everybody.